Hey guys, just down and dirty on this uh, 2005 Ford Explorer. Got it running good without one of the O2 sensors in on this bank. Got a plug cap. But now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a current reading on the fuel injectors on to make sure all of them are going good. Uh, it's the third fuse down. It's a 15 amp fuse over here in the box. What I'm going to do is pull that fuse. And I got these current clamps I was looking at the AES wave ones but they were so expensive and you have to get you know a kit of two and then three and then buy them one by one I got these ones off of martinlauren.com uh, on his H scope site and these are same thing as you're getting from AES wave they might not have all the silicone and all the fancy things on them but I mean the wires seem nice you get you get a selection of everything. I don't think you're gonna find a fuse that these won't fit on. I use these old school ones, these fuse buddies, but they, they won't get in a lot of things. This it might be good on, but today I'm gonna to use these and I'm just getting an amperage reading on the oscilloscope and seeing what you know, making sure basically that everything's having an event. All right, I'm gonna set it up and I'll be back. All right, I got H scope started into the five twelve. And I have an AES wave, uh, 60 amp, 20 amp, and I'm going to put it on the 20 amp and zero it out. But first I noticed I didn't have, uh, usually you have to set up your parameters for whatever probe you're using. You have to know, you know, what the difference is. It's written on the side of it, but whenever I went to the, oh, I'm sorry, wrong button. When I went to the settings and then the probes, um, then you have a download button Then under current Somebody was nice enough to already put an AES wave 60 amp 20 amp. We're gonna be using the 20 amp So it successfully imported it so it knows what probe I'm gonna have on channel one. So when I go back To the actual scope when I go to channel one I'm going to select the AES wave 20 amp. There goes my neighbor, man. Yeah, I'm not going to Things you see in this alley, man. But at any rate, go back to the scope. I put it on automotive, and you can see I have the AES, the 20 amp. It's ready to go. Um, we might get a lot of noise. I don't know what we're going to get on this, but there is no wrong. You know, there is no waste of time. Even if you take the time to set everything up, kind of knew this platform. So, you know, just getting familiar with it. I like it. Everything fits in that side box. Sweet. Now I'm going to just turn the power on, put it on the 20 amp, hit the zero button a little bit. I think on the actual oscilloscope side, you could see that better, but it's not engaged. Because on the automotive, you know you have to, you have to start recording for it to come up. So... What I'm going to do is I have that on there. I'm going to just fire the car up and let it run. It's pretty loud. It has a, well, it has a plug cat and I have the O2 sensor out of the driver's side. Out of five, six, seven, and eight. So it's going to be pretty loud. I just want to make sure all the injectors are firing. See what I see on there. Get to use a couple new tools. Cool. All right, on the other. This is just on the regular oscilloscope. Um, that looks alright. Let's go to the automotive. Now, I could hit record.
not give me a place to start. There we go. And it's still logging down on the bottom. It's logging all that data. That's more than enough. Stop the pass. Stop the dark. It stinks. Oh, there's that damn... Had about enough for me, buddy. Okay, we look, we look in on that. We could all shrink it like that. Whatever's more comfortable to you, but... That's pretty sweet. I'm just looking for a dropout. I don't believe I brought my mouse up, so you gotta deal with my fingers. Uh... That's a really big pattern there, man. Okay, channel two's on, which we don't need it on. I'd just be like, right now, I'm just looking for dropouts. But look at how much data we got down there. Just that little bit of time. And you can look at it any way you want. Got a little hash at the top of it, so I don't know if a uh, low pass filter cleans it up some. Looks like it did a little bit. Frequent. No, I don't want the frequency. I don't want on that. That's on low pass. There, that's that's a lot nicer. You let it scroll past it does stay scrolling I figured that out and you could open up the screen found a bad one set of sync and then you you found the culprit but all right guys that was just a little in case you're interested in any of these you know that's something in real life use it's not found out a problem but it's you know checking something that very quickly that if you have a little scope like this in the side box, I can even take that box off, put it in the cupboard, and, you know, whip it out whenever I need it. But that's the whole idea. Just, you know, being able to roll up. Just with my toolbox, have everything handy. You know, just a little mini diag box. Works pretty good. All right, guys, you have a good one. Adios. Welcome back one more time here. Um, whenever I was scrolling through the data, that's what I mean. You have so much storage. Look at that. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, you could just uh, start it with your finger and just let it go, whatever size. I, I just took my time side here a minute. That, that was probably about 30 seconds worth of scrolling. And then, and, and I know I heard, uh, I can probably look back in the video here. I, I think I heard a sputter. But what you do, really, whenever you find one like that, now you could zoom in a little bit. And look, we, we see another one right there. No other ones. Out of all, all that data, too. But the thing is, let me stop this, get as much on the screen. Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. That's the same injector. And see how there's no ramp? These go straight up. Now let me get a... So I'm still getting used to the software, but it, it, it's already, you know, it's already incredible. Like, I mean, this, to be able to screw it, screw it in like that without going, like, you know, the Pico route. I have a Hamtech uh, 1008T automotive 8-channel oscilloscope. Uh, it's software is really clunky to use. I mean, it, it is usable, but it, it, it's I haven't tried it yet, but I have a license for this to use the hand tech. This is two channel, it's eight, but hey, th these two, this is just one channel. 
and I caught this. And that's repeating itself every eighth. Now the thing is, I don't know which one. So that's where the whenever I was using the U-scope, the, the U-scope would have caught this. But now what would I do? You know, I'd have to go around shutting off injectors. But now what I could do with a two-channel, instead of getting out the eight-channel and it's, you know, in the laptop, what I could do is put a second channel in sync with one of the injectors. I'm going to have to use an attenuator because uh, it, it's high, higher voltage there. So, But still, we'll be able to see it and see where, hopefully, it, it does that again while it's running. Because right now, I could tell that those injectors didn't fire. That didn't fire at all. Well, that has a ramp. It's starting. The next one, I think she looked pretty square, eight, eight cylinders down. Would I go the wrong way? Well, just go back till we see it. They're bigger now. I have them larger than whenever I originally caught it. It was very easy to catch just running back through. I didn't see that live, but see there we have one. It should be eight cylinders. There it is. See how his ramp's almost straight up and how much he took. We could put the cursors on, but I mean, really, that's it. Uh, I'd say at 17 amps, that's that injector spiked there. It probably didn't fire. Well, I see if I see a pinnel hump there. I'm not sure about that. Usually, you don't see it closing on the amperage, you see it opening, and it should be on this side. So I don't know, maybe it took out much voltage to fire and then it did open and open late, I have no idea. But all I know is there's something up with that one. We have to find what cylinder that is. All right, let me set up the probe and we'll run the test again. I still have the amp clamp on to see if we could identify which. All right, what I did is I just put, I'm into the number one control wire. So that way, or uh, number five rather. So that way we should be able to tell where number five is and then with the firing order tell which one's dropping out. That's if it drops out, but right now we know on channel one, um, we're gonna use the AES 20 amp. On channel two, I have a times 20 attenuator. Uh, I, I always go overkill, the, I mean, as much as I can. There, I have a, ten, a times 10 attenuator, but it's a, my rule of thumb, and I mean, a lot of people are going to tell you this is wrong, but if, if you overkill it and you see a very small sample, then you know you're safe to move up on your scope. I mean, you should add up all the voltages, know what you're measuring, but um, right now I'm just, you know, I'm kind of going with it. You know, I just go with a bigger one. I don't think I'll blow it up, but... You know, if I do, it's my own fault if we're not looking up the voltage specs. All right, let me fire it up and we'll see what we get. All right, I used the number one coil for a sink, but seems like that's all I got is the number one coil. Don't know why, because I'm on uh, on the uh, fuel injector circuit. So the coil should actually be firing and give me a sync mark. It's going through the fuse box. These should be every injector, only unless there's several fuses for injectors, but usually not. But it was just some plain wit. I mean, if all, all eight and injector patterns were on there and this was only on one, you'd know which one was number one. But we're only picking up number one coil ramp, the amperage ramp, and the uh, firing on it. But oh well. So what you do, you get used to your equipment and you know, sometimes you go down a path, but there's nothing wrong with this. This is just an experiment. Or it, uh, you know, got that little shutter, so I took a look at the fuel injectors, and we did see a little something, but 
now you probably want to test the injectors on the injector not getting the current ramp from up here you want to be getting the current ramp off of the injector but this is going down it has a plug catalytic converter and i have the o2 sensor out it's going to go down i don't know if she's going to get a new y pipe I had just the cat on this side shot the other side i mean it's going but it's i had to take the o2 sensor out to get this side to start shooting and it's you know it's pretty bad but hey no matter what it is whether it's a good vehicle bad vehicle i mean get some data play around get the no good adios again The number one cause of global warming is the 9 volt batteries having to be made for people not shutting their amp clamps off after use. So make sure every time you put these away that they're off because it's easy to leave them on and you come back to a dead battery.